A big thanks to Brabura by Hearthstone Outdoor for sponsoring this episode. I don't know why, but somehow everybody on the internet seems to be cooking their octopus wrong. Yeah, I don't know. They get their spoons out, they beat the octopus. You don't want to smash it, but you want to soften it a little bit. Look at this poor animal, it's already dead. Why would you beat it? It's just crazy. It doesn't get any tender by beating the meat of the octopus. Trust me, I had a lot of octopus, plural of octopus. I just want to stay monetized, please. YouTube. What a beautiful, majestic animal. It's very rare that you see this animal in real life. And it's mostly eaten around the Mediterranean Sea, where of course they live. Where I'm from, it's not that popular octopus. But if you cook this octopus in the right way, it is amazing. And there's a lot of wrong ways and a lot of wrong things to do with octopus. And there's only one right way to do it. I'm gonna check if this octopus has already been cleaned. Uh, the insides has been removed. Most important, of course, is that the ink bag is removed. And then at the bottom, the beak should re be removed as well. And in this case, that needs to be removed still. Just gonna poke a hole. There we go. Now everything has been removed that is unedible and the octopus is ready to be cooked. The first thing that I'm gonna do is chop fine some garlic, followed by two onions. And I'll be cooking on my Brabura by Hearthstone. This is a flat top griddle. In Spain, they call it the plancha. And the difference is that it has an MI coating. And it's absolute perfect for cooking my octopus. In Spain, they eat a lot of octopus. So, perfect. Okay, Google, fatal, perfect. Now it spawns. Perfecto. Which brings us to another part of what everybody else is doing wrong with their octopus. They take a pan of water and they start dipping in that octopus slowly so it doesn't curl up. And then they stop cooking the octopus. That is the weirdest thing ever to me. They're worried about the tentacles curling up, but they're not worried about cooking the octopus fully. That's going to change and I'm going to show you how I do it and how that works so well. I'm gonna take a cast iron pan, I'm gonna set it on my plancha, and I'm gonna heat it up. I turned on two burners on my Brabura griddle, so I have a hot zone that's gonna heat up my pan, and it's gonna keep it nice and warm. I need some volume. To cook this octopus, which is a big thing, I'm going to need a lot of fluids, so you need a lot of energy to get that fluid up to temperature, have it come up to a boil, that's why, two burners. Once the pan is hot, add a little bit of olive oil, add the onion. Now you might wonder, why did you put the pan over there? Well, first of all, then I still have a lot of room to work with. But second of all, that's one of the hottest spots on the flat top griddle. Now there are three big gas burners underneath this, but even though the three gas burners are there, they're still on the sides, just a little bit cooler. And then straight under that gas burner, it's the hottest part. There's a little bit of difference, but the difference matters. And that's where I'm putting my pan. Once the onion turns soft, add the garlic. Next, add some fine pulp tomatoes. And you can recognize the cans by fine pulp or pulpa, which means you got grated tomatoes. Those are the softest, it's almost velvety, and it's the best tomato you can get for a thing like this. And then for flavor, some black olives and some brine capers. Now let the tomatoes cook for about 10 minutes that will sweeten them up and make them taste even better. As you can see, the moisture evaporated. If I stroke my spoon through the pan, you see that all of the moisture is gone. And that's when you know that you have sweet tomatoes. Now it's time to add our octopus. So in goes our beauty. Just let it slide in there slowly. Then add the water to cover up the octopus completely. And now I'm going to let this simmer for hours on end. So don't take that boiled water, dunk it in, boil it for a short period of time. This needs to sit, this needs to be low and slow. I'm talking about stews. If you have tough meat and you can't just break it down, then there's only one solution left to do. Cook it for a long period of time. And when it's still tough, cook it longer. This is gonna be very delicate and very tender if we do it right. Excitement is building up. Let's see if the octopus is ready. Boy, nice simmering soup. There it is. Whoa, <laughs> it's already falling apart on me. Now that is tenderness that I'm looking for. I set my alarm to two hours and 
two hours gone by, this thing is definitely tender. Almost fall apart tender. So I'm gonna get this out of the pan and let it cool down a bit first. Let me perform a quick test to show you what I'm talking about. If I just take this blonde object and I push it into the tentacle, I can cut it with a blunt object. But this means it's tender. Everything else under two hours of slow boiling is not going to give you a tender, joyful experience. It's going to be chewy, gummy. It's not going to be enjoyable. So the only way to cook octopus is to boil it for two hours and then make it taste even better. I'm going to move my Scotsburg pan to the side and let it continue to simmer because I'm definitely not throwing that stuff away. That's pure gold. I'm gonna need some garlic, chop it up. Of course, I'm gonna need some parsley as well. Cut fine, of course. And I'm also gonna need the juice of a lemon. About half a lemon will do the job. Then we're gonna pour in a cup of olive oil. And I'm talking about a good quality olive oil. It's gonna make all the difference. Of course, I'm gonna need some salt, two tablespoons, a teaspoon of ground pepper, and it's done. That's gonna be the seasoning. For what? Let me show you. Let's get that beautiful octopus out again. And here he is, mine is a leg, and I had to chop that leg off for you guys. I'm gonna chop this up into little pieces. Look at that. That white stuff, the meat, is absolutely freaking amazing. As a chef, you always have to taste your ingredients. What does it taste at this phase of the cook? Mm. It's soft and tender. It's like, it's not like butter that soft. It's more of um, like a soft boiled carrot, but not that consistency. Still good enough to slice up into pieces. That last winkly bit, just leave it as it is. It's gonna look good on your plate. Surprise, surprise, there's an olive hidden in the, Do you think that the olive sneaked in to the octopus or do you think the octopus sneakily ate the olive? Now everything's chopped up and I'm gonna pre-season it with our garlic oil. Mix it in and this is ready for the second phase of the cook. And that's gonna happen right here on the plancha. I got two burners on, we got this side hot, we got the other side, a cool side where we can lay things to rest. I got my soup simmering away right there. So that's ready to go. Now this goes straight on to the hot zone. And all we need now is a little bit of flavor from this octopus. We don't need to cook it any further. I want to see a little bit of crunchiness, a little bit of crust building up. So we are getting away from that texture of everything being soft. Now we're getting that crunchy exterior with that soft interior. Let the plancha work its magic. And once you think you build up a crust, then scrape underneath and make sure that that crust goes onto the octopus. Once you got the crust that you're looking for, move it to the side because I got a little bonus dish right here. This is mackerel. I use the same garlic oil for this mackerel as I did for the octopus. And if you're making this, you're gonna be feeding a lot of people. And that's exactly why I love this plancha so much, because it can handle it all. Don't forget to drizzle on that leftover oil that sits in your tray. There we go. It all goes onto the plancha with the spices. I'm cooking that mackerel with the skin down first. What I'm looking for is that skin to curl off Tighten up, and once I see that the cooking process has gone halfway through, I know it's time to flip. That's gonna be so tasty. And if you're like me, you get hungry while you're cooking, just tear off a piece of bread, just push it onto the grill plate, let it sit there, small chunks, and that's gonna soak all of that flavor up. And basically, these are gonna be croutons. Ooh. A beautiful macro. In comes the octopus. Oh, that looks so freaking amazing. A little bit of that stuff that was on the grill plate. And of course, I want that tentacle of the octopus to sit on top. That's like a trademark. And of course, we can't forget about our soup. This is how you make a plateful of deliciousness out of octopus. So forget everything else that you see on the internet. Go to pitmasterx.com. Check out this recipe, go make it yourself. 
and be amazed of what octopus, octopus, octopus should really taste like. That is really bad. That is really, really, really bad to say, to, to misspell it like that. It's not octopus, it's octopus. Oh, oh, mmm. It's even 10 times better than when I ate it from the pub. Trust me, you're gonna love me.